Hello and welcome. The inclusion of the character Cheryl Blossom in the oddly popular TV show Riverdale is somewhat surprising. Not because she's a flat and uninteresting character, but because the possible inspiration for the character is a little controversial. At the beginning of 1982, Last Gas Comics began publishing Cherry Pop-Tart, a comic book series by writer-slash-artist Larry Wells. The comic was specifically drawn in the Archie Comics house style, which was based on the iconic, clean-lined style of the immensely talented and prolific artist Dan DiCarlo. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that if you think of an Archie character, any character, an image DiCarlo once drew will pop into your head. He was an intrinsic part of Archie Comics for decades, producing work for that company from the 50s until the 90s. He is the co-creator of Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, and Josie and the Pussycats. For the record, the look of the lead singer, Josie McCoy, is based on DiCarlo's wife. Cherry Pop-Tart was, well, a sex-positive young lady. She is perpetually turned 18. All of her stories are based around her sexual adventures and they're told in rather graphic detail. The first issue, which was published in early 1982, contained parodies of Archie comic stars, Betty, Veronica, Archie, and Jughead. Additionally, the issue included a parody of the Archie comics letter column, where middle-aged editors would dispense generic advice to preteen readers. So, basically, the first issue of Cherry Pop-Tart was a direct, mostly pornographic satire of the innocent, completely inoffensive Archie material. However, later issues would focus exclusively on the Cherry character and wouldn't include additional Archie parodies. Curiously, later in 1982, in Betty and Veronica number 320, a new character named Cheryl Blossom was introduced. This character was not exactly the standard Archie type of character. Cheryl was as risque as Archie comics would allow. In the story that introduced her, Cheryl thought Riverdale was, like, totally L7 and she wanted to get both Betty and Veronica to go topless with her on the beach. The story also introduces Cheryl's brother, Jason, who suggests they have a few beers while lounging in the sun. Going topless and teenage drinking in the same story is probably the edgiest Archie ever got in the 80s. Now, I'm not an Archie comic specialist, but that seems like a highly unusual story from a tepid line of comics. Notably, the Cheryl Blossom solo series that followed was as generic and tame as all the other Archie content. But that first appearance is something else. In other words, one might come to the conclusion that the writer of that story, Frank Doyle, and the artist, Dan DiCarlo, were possibly familiar with the Cherry Pop-Tart parody of their work. And in turn, they decided to parody that parody with their own creation, Cheryl Blossom. Now, this suspicion can't be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. In fact, Brian Cronin at Comic Book Resources addressed this rumor and came to the conclusion that it was untrue. However, his only source of information was the art director of that issue, Victor Gorelick. Obviously, Gorelick denied any connection between the two characters. For the record, both Frank Doyle and Dan DiCarlo passed away years before Mr. Cronin made his inquiry. After searching for interviews with Doyle and DiCarlo, I could find nothing concerning Cherry Pop-Tart. So, as far as one can tell, neither creator publicly confirmed or denied this possible connection. Personally, I'm inclined to think the timing of Cheryl's creation in relation to the publication of Cherry Pop-Tart, along with the basic similarities in character, is a bit suspect. It needs to be pointed out, it would be highly unlikely that Gorelick, who became Archie Comics' editor-in-chief, would admit they had purposefully parodied an adult version of their own comics within one of their own comics. I mean, that would be very off-brand. Not to mention, officially stating that Cheryl Blossom was a response to Cherry Pop-Tart could be interpreted as an admission of plagiarism. So even if Cheryl was a parody of Cherry, no one working at the company would admit that was actually the case because of the potential legal ramifications. To be clear, none of this suggests Cherry actually inspired Cheryl. The timing and the character traits seem suspicious, but those may be coincidental. Objectively, that may be the only conclusion one can reasonably arrive at. Here's a few more related Cherry Pop-Tart tidbits for those who may be interested. The first two issues of the comic are the only two issues with the title, Cherry Pop-Tart. All subsequent issues were simply titled, Cherry, as were reprints of the first two issues. 
allegedly the company, Kellogg's, who manufactured actual cherry Pop-Tarts, either threatened legal action or filed lawsuit against Wells for using the trademark name. So the name of the comic was shortened to Cherry to address Kellogg's objection. What's also notable is the first issue of Cherry Pop-Tart also included a story titled Vampironica, written and illustrated by Larry Todd. This Vampironica story was removed from later printings of Cherry Pop-Tart to avoid any legal hassle from Archie. After all, this story stars thinly veiled versions of the main Archie cast doing very, very adult activities. To be clear, there was never a lawsuit from Archie. Possibly, due to legal troubles with Kellogg's, Wells decided to edit out the Vampironica story just in case Archie started to feel litigious. Ironically, in 2018, Archie's horror imprint would publish a comic using that name. Finally, Neil Gaiman wrote a story for Cherry Deluxe in 1998. The story involves an angel and a demon arguing over who gets to claim a soul. They decide to have a sex contest to determine the outcome. And that's about all the details I can give. It's a charming little romp with a very Gaiman conclusion. In fact, that somewhat applies to the entire Cherry series. It's a fun romp that's more than a little gratuitous. It also contains some questionable elements, and it did challenge some taboos. But that's to be expected from an underground comic. Cherry is like a relic from the 60s counterculture movement, one that somehow survived the 80s and the 90s, and remained somewhat contemporary. Each issue feels like a time capsule of subversive attitudes and sexuality. It's definitely a series from a different time. As for Dan DiCarlo, before he became inseparable with the Archie brand, his early career had a fair amount of cheesecake, good girl artwork most of which appeared in, well, let's call them gentlemen's magazines. And, in the 90s, he did a somewhat adult version of Josie and the Pussycats for Penthouse Comics. So his career was a little spicier than one might expect. In the end, whether Cheryl Blossom is inspired by Cherry Pop-Tart or not, is one of those oddball trivial pieces of comic book history that I really want to be true. I mean, it probably isn't. But it really should be. This video is brought to you courtesy of these very fine people. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to click the subscribe button and support Overlord Comics. If you'd like to go a step further, click the join button and choose the option most suitable for you.